So, the Premier League, it's back. And because I'm technically a YouTuber, and if you don't do a season predictions video, uh, they kick it off the platform. Uh, I'm going to do season predictions. Shock. Wholly original content. This is me, you know, content genius that I am. Uh, throwing things out, breaking down barriers, boundaries, crafting new and original things for your eyes and ears. Um, yeah, so I'm going to talk about the Premier League in general and I'll come to Liverpool because I, 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 I'm not sure how I feel about Liverpool's season hopes at the moment. I was going to record this on Thursday um, and then... Um, it all looked like it was kicking off Liverpool, you know, were supposedly putting a bid in for Caicedo and that was like, okay, well, I'll, I'll wait. And then Friday came around and Liverpool had put a bid in. They were going to definitely get him. And then as Friday progressed, uh, no, he doesn't want to come to Liverpool and they might not get him and all that. So that's sort of absolutely everything up in the air. I can't wait any longer other than I can leave it in this video as long as possible. What do I think is going to happen then um, in a general Premier League sense? Let's just go hard and heavy, straight off the bat. Thinking that Manchester City are not going to be the best team in this league is the shortest route to madness. I have learned this the hard way over the last five years or so. Shortest pathway to madness. Honestly, as the crow flies, if madness is there um, and you want to get there as quickly as possible, try to create storylines in your head that say Man City aren't going to be a dominant force and aren't going to basically get at least 90 points or there or thereabouts in the league this season. Um, and you might argue, you know, this, they haven't done. They don't do it every single season. I think they'd have done that last year. I think if Arsenal hadn't basically had their legs fall off by the time they got to the, the start line of the title race, which is to say, you know, like the last 10 games, uh, I think City would have would have just smashed through 90 points, to be honest, and beyond. Um so yeah, look, whilst they have, I'm doing it, they have lost goals. Manchester City have lost Ilkay Gundogan and Riyad Mahrez. And that is a lot of goals and assists. And you know, when Erling Haaland's goals dried up at the back end of the season, you've got those two guys who are match winners, proven match winners, proven goal scorers. They are double figures goal scorers every single season. There's the best part of 30 goals. There's the best part of what, probably like 40 odd goal contributions there between the two of them plus all the experience that goes with it as well. However, it's Man City. Pep Guardiola is basically in click continue and win everything mode in, in chat manager, footy manager here. He's got everything. He can do whatever he wants. Fergie had this uh, on the United where he could just start playing six centre-backs in a team and they just win because that was just the level that they were at by that point. Uh, it's very rare that Liverpool ever really got onto that level in my lifetime. They come close. Um, uh, you know, the title winning season basically being it, even though there was lots of rotation involved in that. Anyway, um, so they'll just have Phil Foden will just step up and score more goals, or Cole Palmer, as we saw it in the Charity Shield, will just all of a sudden become a 10 to 15 goal a season player, I, seemingly from out of nowhere. They've got good young players. It is a gamble, you know, I, I, you know, and again, on paper, I think they're weaker. They're obviously going to try and strengthen it. You know, they had Paqueta. He's a good footballer. I'm not sure he goes in their first regular first team. He might be a bit of a rotational player, but he's a very good player. Um, if they had someone like Jeremy Doku, that would be some more pace out on the flanks and give them more options. But Alvarez um, will probably just score more goals. Harlem will probably score exactly the same amount of goals. Foden will score more. Maybe De Bruyne will score more. They might get more out of Kovacic. That's one where it looks a bit weaker, but whatever. The point is, yeah, don't try not to get yourself too down on looking at Man City. This is mainly for Arsenal fans, by the way, but it might come round to Liverpool again, which I'm not. I'm undecided on. We'll get there. Arsenal look like they've done the smartest business for me. They will be. They are the most likely challengers to Man City's crown. Again, sitting right here right now, I don't think it's cut and dry as that. And I think there will be pressure on them that they've not yet foreseen or experienced. And that pressure is, of course, Champions League football. Experienced it with what Liverpool kind of had, except that maybe we made it look a little easy. You know, ultimately, Liverpool get back into the Champions League in 17-18. They have to go through the qualifying round. Uh, they beat Hoffenheim over two legs in that one uh, to get into the group stage for the first time on the Ian Cop, the first time since Brendan Rodgers absolutely spaffed his load. Um, don't even want to talk about them. It was terrible. We, that was also bad. We clapped Cristiano Ronaldo off the pitch at Anfield. That's how bad we were in the Champions League that season. Gommel? Is it Gommel? Anyway, um, <laughs> we, Liverpool kind of 
pissed it by getting back into the Champions League, going through a qualifying round, and then getting to the final, and uh, getting back into top four, and then the next year, um, getting to the final and winning it while putting down 97 points in the league. We've made it look easy. It's not easy. It's not easy at all. Um, and if Arsenal can do it, then I think it proves their credentials. that they can still put a title challenge together whilst making a really good fist of the Champions League, then more power to them. I think they're a little, still a little young. Um, the main men, the ones they rely on for goals. Or Kai Havertz to score in the Champions League final, that's obviously an experience that will, will count him in good stead, of course. But yeah, that's the unknown for Arsenal. I look at their business, I look at where they've gone and how they've grown, I look at the support they've got of the fan base, everything looks like it's going right for Arsenal right now, so no reason to suggest why it won't continue to go right. Rice, expensive, but obviously a, a really nice fit, best in pretty much the best in class that they could have got for that position. Havertz, I think, is a nice addition just to kind of you know, he'll be a backup forward, not a great one, but he's not going to score loads of goals, but he can certainly systemically hold down that place uh, in a way that Gabriel Jesus probably would do. Again, slightly worse. I think he can play as an offensive eight as a 10 for them. He can give Odegaard some time off. He can play in the left side of the eight uh, as well if needed be. Uh, in the sort of shaka positions, they want to be more attacking. I, again, I think Timber looks a good player. Raya is a better goalkeeper than. Uh, than Ramsdale so you know if he gets himself into the team and I think Ramsdale will be given a chance to hang himself but he'll get you know eventually he will kind of um, you know what I mean it's just it's a different question. He will um he'll get a chance to go in there. Um and and, and probably oust them and they'll be a better team for it. So yeah, why not say I think Arsenal are the closest thing to title challenges. Below that Chelsea, who knows? We'll know more when Liverpool play them at the weekend, but even that won't be telling. We've seen teams lose the first game of the season in recent seasons and, and then go on incredible runs. Arsenal had a real struggle against Brentford a couple of seasons ago. And then, you know, again, have basically been on the rise ever since. Um, I think Chelsea have got the raw materials there. This whole Caicedo, Lavia stuff, who knows how that's going to sit. And that might be a, a deciding factor in all this, by the way. But... Nkunku being out for four months is, is damaging to their prospects. I think he was going to be the real transformative effect in their attack. Jackson looks good, looks like he'll score goals, but can he do that consistently at this level? You know, Jordy's out. Until you do it, you can't know if someone's going to do it. Strikers are weird like that, and the Premier League's a very t- a tough league for that. We've seen guys who can do it for some teams in the Premier League, not do it for teams, other teams. Lukaku, prime example, clearly a 25 to 30 goal a season centre forward, and has been close to that in the Premier League as well. But it used the wrong way. It won't work. It didn't work for him, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I don't know on Chelsea, but I think they're likely. Pochettino, such a good manager, they'll probably be a top four team. Spurs are just going to be wild and free and attack, and they're going to be a much crapper version of Liverpool this year. No European football. That's right. Um, might help him have some more time on the training pitch, which could give him a leg up. Caddy Kane, as I'm recording this, is apparently just landed in in, in Munich, so like, he looks like he's going to be gone. They've got to spend that money. That can build a squad, but it's not going to replace in well, not going to get one individual to replace his goals. I would suspect. So I don't think Spurs are going to be any great contender for Champions League, possibly for Europa League places. I think that'll be a good season for them uh, and give Poster Poster Coglu a good sort of like uh, arc, I guess. Um. Brighton, how will they handle Europa League football? They look a smart outfit. Same as Arsenal, but at a level below. I, I think if they can handle the pressures, and Milner's a great buy for them, just in terms of the experience he brings, that would be a great buy for them. They'll just find five other gems who will be worth £60 million in a season and be absolutely fine. They're, they're going to be cash rich as well to do whatever they need to at the end of the window into January if they need Bolston. Brighton could be a bit of a, not a proper dark horse because they were so good last year, it won't be a shock. The Zerbi looks a boss coach, they've got a boss system, boss style. I think they'll really enjoy Europe as well. Um, so they they would be my outside tip to finish in the top four of the non-traditional sort of teams. The Manx, um, I'll sit here and tell you what's wrong with them. They're a basket case of a football club. They've had the ownership thing hanging over the head for a while. The fans don't, you know, don't really know how to support the team anymore because they're so success is so ingrained in them that it actually they can't see the wood for the trees a lot of time I think Ten Hag's a good coach I'm not sure I'm not sure he's the third best manager in the league Um, at best he's the fourth best manager I think I think Klopp and uh, Guardiola obviously one and two Um, I think Arteta's better but anyway kind of by the by if Hoyland's it um, that's a that's a big ask for a young player who scored nine Serie A goals last season to step up and be the twenty five goal a season. You know, well twenty they need twenty goals out of a, a Premier League goals from a centre forward. I think to compete at least. Now they can Rashford can have that from from wide areas potentially. Um, I'm told 
I found out today eight this week that Garnacho was a good player. I, I, I vaguely recalled him as a, a, a an annoying looking lad with with crap hair, but then that's worked for Phil Foden. Um, he might he might be fine. I don't know. I really don't know about him. Um, Mason Mount had a few goals from midfield. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent convinced. The Manchester. I think they'll be a solid outfit. I think they they'll be it'll be a solid chance of probably fighting for fourth. Um, I don't think Newcastle are going to get any better. I think they'll they're the ones who will struggle with the Champions League, and it might be this is the season where Eddie Howe sees it out. But then at the end they go, okay, well we're out the Champions League. We want to get back into the Champions League. We need to go and get a Champions League experience manager. It feels like that kind of situation. So. I wouldn't shock me if Newcastle had a really, really tough year this year. More expectation, more pressure. And they're more of a known entity as well. And the vibe, the boss vibes, can they carry them on? Because they helped carry them a lot, a long way last season, as well as really good coaching, by the way. But I'm, I'm unsure on Newcastle's long-term credentials. I don't think they've taken a significant leap forward in terms of personnel to knowledge of goodbye. But Italian midfielders coming into the league can go really really badly can he adjust to the pace of the Premier League in, in, in a short time probably because he's young but that's a that's an unknown for me I'm not convinced on on, on Newcastle and then relegation wise I mean I'm yada yada in a few teams sorry I think I think Villa will be a, another one of those dark horses and um, whether they've got enough squad depth to compete in Europe which they absolutely will they're, they're, they're probably my tip for the Conference League this year just because of the manager and um, why not you know, if you're gonna put if you're gonna put chuck a few quid on a conference league winner, you could do well the well worse than back a manager who's just got incredible European uh, European pedigree. Um so yeah, Villa Villa are another little outside dark horse, but I'm not sure whether they're quite ready because he's not I know Zer the Zer Zerby's only been there basically as long, but I think he was picking up something that already had a lot of the hallmarks of what he was trying to do, whereas can I'm not sure whether Villa. Could, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think I think they'll have a good season. Um, down the league, Everton, big question. The Ev, the big, the the big local rivals. They seem quite positive. The Toffee TV lads seem quite upbeat with what they think is going to happen this year. My overall feeling was when you buy an Ashley Young at 38 years old to play in your team, that smells relegation to me. And you know, Dominic Calvert Lewin once a game would be the linchpin of if they can keep him fit, remotely fit, and he can score goals. That might help. I'm not sure they've got enough goals in that team. They might just have enough. And the point is, Dice should make them harder to beat. And if they can just spring a few surprises, and I think Dan Juma, he's a good player. He is a good player. Um, whether they play him wide or playing through the centre is a big question. He did a lot through the middle for Villarreal, particularly in the season where we played them in the Champions League semi-final. He could be a real a real asset for them, but it's whether they've got enough. Have they got enough around them? And I'm not I'm not totally convinced of that. But then going back to the relegation thing, another big pressure on Forest. They survived last season. They've got the players now. They've got a ton of footballers. Are they all now better integrated? I think Cooper's a really good coach. Can he get more than last year? If they can, then that I would I think they've got better, more I think they've got more good players than Everton, which is what might push them above then. Luton, oh, I'm not going to say I know more, attest to this. They seem like they'll be absolute favourites to go straight back down. It's miserable at Sheffield United right now. I'll end on the overlap from the guy who was on there. Just totally downbeat about all their chances in his words. They've sold all the best players and they've not bought any. Um, so they're in big, big trouble. And I, I've got a soft spot for Sheffield United. I used to live up the road um, from Bramall Lane. Um, good away as well, Sheffield. So, yeah, it would be a pity. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I think the, those two are the nailed on ones. And then who else is going to be the worst? Can David Moyes, is David Moyes going to get a tune this year? With a you know European trophy under his belt, but now that they've got, um, they, I think the fans are waiting for him to to basically go, and there's been a bit of a fight in terms of what their director of football wants, in terms of what he wants, in terms of recruitment. It looks like he's getting his way, but do you want to give David Moyes his way? That's the question. Um, I'm not sure he's got one year left on his contract. I think as it stands. West Ham could be on the verge of a little mini implosion and can they survive that? They could be a little surprise package to go down. Although, again, on paper, they've got far too many good footballers for that to be a thing. If they lose Paqueta to City, that would be a big loss, of course. Um, but, like, Ward Prowse, smart signing for them. Maguire is obviously gets a ton of stick, but he's he's a really good, just, just a defender. He's just a good, solid centre-half. They've got a big thing for English centre halves at West Ham. Maybe he can be reborn there. That kind of stuff. That would be sound. That would be sound for them. But I do worry for Moyes a little bit. Not in a way that's ever going to make me feel any actual emotion. But you know that that kind of stuff. I just 
Yeah, my, my gut feeling was Everton will get relegated because they've come so close the last couple of years and I don't think they've really significantly improved if they're not playing good football and then and this and they're grinding out, but they're not grinding out enough well. Will their fans turn on them on the manager again? It's very it's very much a possibility. I think Everton just want to have fun. They want a manager who gets them all pumped up and fired up, shows some emotion and plays a bit of football that they can buy into, and I'm not convinced Dice is that. But he could be. Dogs of war, we've been saying it for years, you know, get back to the spirit of 95 and all that, and he might be able to ignite something in them, but I'm not sure he's got the resources, so it, it feels like it's going to be a bit of a dour season for them, and I, it wouldn't shock me if it went down, but, um, yeah, that's kind of where they're at. So, look, Liverpool, uh, I think we've got the firepower to compete. I think we should finish in the top four. I think we can. I think the fact that we've got Europa League football will give us an opportunity to blood some more young players and give them some opportunities. I want to see more of Ben Doak. I want to see Harvey Elliott, Curtis Jones, Stefan Bacetic, uh, Connor Bradley, uh, Queen Kelleher. These are all players who've got bright futures, I think, at the football club or certainly in the game. Um, if they can make themselves useful assets, then it's going to help Liverpool in the in this job, medium and long term. I think we can have fun in the Europa League, potentially, and then still put a lot of firepower. We don't even need to play two teams. I think you can make potentially three or four really good changes from Thursday to Sunday and maybe make a good fist of it all and then decide what you want to do with domestic cups. The defensive midfield of things an issue. If they manage to sign a good proven one and look my my thought was when it looked like Caicedo was done, my statement was I think that's a signing that makes Liverpool title contenders um rather than top four contenders. If they get someone of that ilk, oh hey him, who knows? Probably not. Um, then that could be the thing that gives them that that would give me greater confidence. I think they need a centre half. I think they def and they definitely need a DM and probably another guy who can play DM. That's what's short for Liverpool to be a complete squad. And until they get that, City and Arsenal, although City haven't got great numbers. They've both got a more rounded, more integrated overall squad than Liverpool have. So I would suggest that Liverpool unless they are perfect in the transfer market now, which seems increasingly unlikely given how little there is left of it and the, the mess that's been made of it so far, I think Liverpool can get back to being in that sort of three-horse title race. And I, if, if they can get that squad, I would I would pitch them to be a hat above Arsenal because the Europa League versus Champions League sort of conundrum. Liverpool should be fitter, fresher, stronger and more, one more practised across the board. Arsenal are going to have to dig deep on a bunch of players and ask them to go. And City had that last season, so maybe that'll cause them to slip up a little bit. And, you know, it's the path to madness, so don't, don't go too far down that rabbit hole. If not, I think we still can challenge because goals win football matches and we've got loads of goals in us. It's just a vibe thing. I think it needs to be a momentum, start hard, start fast, score goals, and keep bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. And maybe you can get to January second or third in the league or hell top why not why not let's dream uh, and then maybe in January can you go and get the extra play pieces that you need I don't know but I'm optimistic about what Liverpool can do on a game by game basis but I've seen what it takes for us to win the league and I don't think we've got that squad that was a perfect Liverpool team it was a perfect sort of 14 or 15 players for what we were doing give us just a little bit of rotation of real quality um, and I think we've I think we've got more good players now, but they're not as well spread out. So it's a real unknown. So Liverpool, I think they'll finish top four. I do, um, but I'm not sure that they will. I'm not sure that they will challenge for the title unless they get more better business done in the window, which they haven't done at time of recording. Because um, Moises can say those agents are apparently balanced. Um, yeah, I think Liverpool will win the Europa League. I do. I think we'll go to Dublin, uh, or at least get to the final. I'd be nice to win it, just to complete the set more than anything else. I think we can make a good, a good fist of the domestic cup if we can't quite match the level in the league. I'd like to see us go deep in the FA Cup. And in the Champions League, I could see City picking it up again and just continuing this sort of dominant thing, to be perfectly honest, as boring as that would be. But outside shelves is a Harry Kane's goals at Bayern Munich to drive them towards a, the biggest honour in football. And then he can kind of like, he can do like this celebration or something and people will lose the shit maybe um, right that's it what do you think on my predictions let me know in the comments how high can Liverpool go even if they don't get all the, all the things that they need will their goals be enough to at least make it an exciting season who knows drop a like on the video if you would be so kind and uh, yeah let's let's get this Premier League game on eh eh <sighs>